Dear sisters and brothers, I would like to start my sermon by thanking, first of all, God, our Heavenly Father, who made it possible for me to come down here. It took me weeks to process visa to the USA, and eventually I succeeded, and then flying for nearly 20 hours. For all this, I thank God that he made it possible for me to be here. And also, I would like to thank the Catholic Archdiocese of Los Angeles that invited me to come over to this Archdiocese, and again to thank the administration of this parish, starting with the priests who are here, Father Dennis, Father Marlon, received me very warmly to this place, and Frank and all his workers, co-workers, and also Cambria, who actually received me warmly and also yesterday gave me a very beautiful meal, which I ate, and up to now I still feel very happy about it. <laughs> and I feel, I think by the end of my stay here, most likely I'm going to add a few more pounds on my weight. My name, as you are already told, is Father John Mba Pia, and I come from the Catholic Diocese of Tombora Yambio in South Sudan. You might have heard some stories or seen South Sudan in news. Sudan was one big country in Africa at some point. It got its independence from the British in 1954. And since then, there has been conflict and conflict and the war because the North was more Arab and the South Christian. So there was war between Christians in the South and Arabs in the North. This war started even before I was born and lasted for years and years until 2011 when the country was divided. South Sudan became independent and now called the Republic of South Sudan. But since independence in 2011, we had only two years of peace. In 2013, another war started in South Sudan itself. This time, not between Arabs and Christians, but it is among South Sudanese who are Christians, and the reason is fighting for power, and it is a political battle, it's a political war. The fighting in my country now, in South Sudan, has led to so many South Sudanese displaced in the neighboring countries as refugees. Uganda, which is a neighboring country to South Sudan right now, has one million South Sudanese refugees. Other neighboring countries to South Sudan, like Ethiopia, Kenya, Democratic Republic of Congo, Central African Republic, has also received thousands of South Sudanese. And those who have remained in South Sudan right now are not in their houses, on their farmland. The war has shifted them, has displaced them from their houses, from their homes, from their farmland that became very insecure to places of relative peace. And in the course of the shifting, they lost their property. They lost their farmland. Their houses made out of grass were burned. The food that were stored for their children and the family looted and destroyed. Where majority of the displaced, internally displaced people live right now, 
they live in a situation where they don't have even one meal in a day, one good meal in a day. They live right now in a situation of desperation of life and absolute poverty. Many children are not going to school because the parents have become poor and poorer. Many children are dying now because there are no good health centers, health services, and even the parents have become poorer to take care of their children. Just before I came in one of the parishes, 15 children died. The reason was malnutrition and hunger. And at times the death is because of lack of medicine. They die from sicknesses and diseases like malaria, like typhoid, and typhoid is caused due to drinking of contaminated water. The mortality rate of children is very high generally right now in my country. Many families do not have anything to eat, especially single mothers with children who lost their husbands during war. And they hardly have even the basic necessities for life, even buying soap for washing or for bathing, leave alone salt for cooking food and cooking oil. This has made life very difficult for the majority of the poor people in my diocese and in my country. Even for us as priests, life is very difficult. For me, where I live in my parish, life is a big challenge. It is just because I love my priesthood, I love my people. It is difficult even for me to get good meal to eat, to do my work, but I remain serving God because I love my ministry. My diocese is eventually poor because a diocese depends on its Christians. A parish depends on its parishioners. On a Sunday like this, in what we could call a wealthy church, the total collection when the church is full, even after many masses, is only between five to ten dollars. And this can hardly even buy hosts and wine, even for mass. But when I come to a country like this, I see everything so amazing for me. To see the way food is cooked here, using gas. Oh my goodness, in a few minutes, food is ready. We have to use wood. You go in the bush looking for wood, for cooking, for hours and hours. And the food takes too long to cook. You start cooking lunch by 7 a.m. in the morning, by 8 a.m. in the morning, and it is ready by 1 or by 2 for eating. The nice, clean drinking water that you have, that I'm enjoying right now, with the ice you have, I take ice and I feel very comfortable, very happy. But back home, it is muddy water. That's why many children are being infected due to drinking of contaminated water by especially typhoid. And the beautiful houses that you have, our houses are made out of grass. That's why they are always burned and destroyed during the battle, during fighting. The nice roads that you have here, smartly made roads, our roads are all dusty, full of dust. My dear sisters and brothers, as I come to you today, I'm sure I'm not the first person to come to this parish to seek support. Many people have come in the past asking you for your support, for your generosity. But maybe my coming could be unique in its own way. Maybe you have never seen anybody from the Sudan area, the South Sudan, 
the suffering brothers and sisters from there, maybe you have never met them before. That could be a unique thing in its own. It could be unique in a way that you look at the readings of today. Jesus is giving his church to Peter, telling him to take care of his church. And this very Sunday, the Lord brings me here. Maybe he's communicating to you that you are the Peter. And he's even giving his church, part of his church to you, which is South Sudan, which is myself, which is my diocese, and trusting it to you to take care of it with your consolation, with your prayers, and even with your donation. When I look at you as a holy family church, what I have in mind is the holy family is an, ex is an extended family, even up to South Sudan. I feel my diocese and myself here, I'm part even of this holy family. And in the holy family, or in any family, when a member is in trouble, the other members cannot leave the one in trouble to die. That's why when Jesus was in trouble from Pilate, what happened? Mary and Joseph took him to exile to rescue him. Today, we are in the place of Jesus as part of that family, and you are in the place of Mary and Joseph to rescue us, to rescue my diocese. Dear sisters and brothers, the support you give today, the support you give to us, can help to provide seeds and tools for a starving family to grow their own food and have a sustainable livelihood. The support you give today can be able to buy medicine for a child almost dying and you give it life. The support you give today can feed a starving family for a week, for more weeks, and you keep them alive, praising God, thanking God for you as a gift in our life as a diocese of the Sudan, the South Sudan, and praying for you. The support you give today can sponsor a child to school and this child can learn and be a source of peace even in South Sudan. Can even sponsor a seminarian to become a priest and continue praying for you. Besides your donations, pray for me, pray for my mission, pray for my diocese and my people. I need your consolation. I will also pray for you. You also have needs. You need my prayer as a priest. You need my prayer as well. I thank you very much for your donation. I thank you very much for your consolation and your closeness to me and even your smile. I enjoy the smile in this, in this parish. Everybody smiles to me and I feel very happy. May God bless you.